Hi everybody, welcome back. So, in the previous video we looked at directives, and how to build one, and basically all the things you can kind of do with them, and basically what their purposes are in Angular 2, as opposed to what their purposes were in Angular 1, okay, or Angular JS, or whatever you want to call it. In this video, I just want to quickly run through the lifecycle hooks for directives, I'm not going to be typing any code in this. I literally have already typed all this pre-planned. And the reason for that is you've all seen the lifecycle hooks before in components. And so the typing is really not much different, okay? The only difference is, is that there's less hooks for directives and I want to demonstrate the order they go in, okay? So what I've done is I've created a kind of like a form screen here where I have the ability to change the background color of a div right by typing in the color code here so once I put in a full color so if I come in and go hash uh, ff0 you'll see that this lifecycle hooks directive div goes yellow okay so it's just bound to an input nothing major there and this second one doesn't actually really do anything to the div all it does is demonstrate that when I change something inside of here, it's going to run a do check on the directive. Okay. And then I've got this check, this checkbox here, which toggles and hides the directive. So we can check things like, you know, on init and on destroy. Okay. So before I show what's in the console down below here and explain the flow, I just want to show you the code quickly. So we've got our app component. It has three properties. It has a background color, which maps to this input here, the background color. It has a pointless property, which I've called pointless because it doesn't really do anything to the application other than trigger do check events on components and directives. So that's why I call it pointless. It's just to demonstrate the do check event. So that maps to that. And then the final one I've got here is show child component, which is just a bit flag and that travels to this. From a HTML point of view, I've got a header, I've got a paragraph, but then I've got a form, and so I've got an input. Now it's bound to the background color, as I said. The second one's bound to the pointless property, as I said. And you can see I've got a div here with an ngif on it. And if show child component is set to true, it's going to show the, direct, uh, the child component that I have here. And if it's set to false, it won't show it. And then underneath that is actually where that's toggled. Okay. Now I've got a child component in this application simply because what I want to demonstrate is under what circumstances do the directive uh, lifecycle hooks fire? And how does that relate to the component which it's contained in? Okay. So what I've done is I've created a child component and I've added every single lifecycle hook that's on for a, for a component. And basically I've just spat some text, you know, child component, whatever the lifecycle hook is called, right? All the way down to destroy it. And then inside the child component HTML, I've got a div with a directive on it. And that directive is pointing to a property of the child component, which happens to be this input here. Okay, so this is taken as an input. This child component accepts a background color input. That overall comes from the app component HTML, where we're passing in this attribute. And that itself is also a background color property, which is bound to the control here. So the flow is, when we change the input in the parent control, it's passed down to the child component. And then basically when it gets to the child component, it flows through to the lifecycle div directive where, you know, the value of this directive now has the value that was from the original input. Now, if none of that makes sense of what I've done there, maybe just pause the video quickly, go back and have a quick review of what I just said and look at the actual input or the actual form and you might get a better understanding. If you don't, send me an email, okay? And I'll explain more. Or you can check out the code and see it for yourself. Obviously, all this is in Git. The repo will be in the description. 
So if you're a little lost, you can look at that. Now the point is, is that I've got all these lifecycle hooks so we can demonstrate the flow. And also inside the directive, I've got uh, the lifecycle hooks that it supports. Okay, now for a directive, the lifecycle hooks that it supports is on changes, on edit, do check, and on destroy. The ones it does not support is after content init, after content checked, after view edit, and after view checked. And the reason for that is pretty simple. There is no inner content unless you generate it. Okay, there is no inside of the template what is there, right? It's, it's a behavior that's applied to one div and one div only. And it's not about loading in any children or any view content or anything like that, okay? So that's why they don't support them. I don't know if that makes sense. Once again, if it doesn't, send me an email. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. But here as well, I've got the same console or whatever. What I've also got is the ability to bind the host binding style dot background color of the div that's associated to this directive. And I'm saying to the background color, which is an input. So basically ng on changes. So whenever we change the input for the background color, it's going to fire this off and it's going to update the color, which we've already seen. Now, let's think about the flow here. What's going to happen? I'm going to not refresh the screen yet. I'm going to hide the console so you can't see it. But what I expect to happen is when I refresh this page, right, the, the root app component will initialize itself, which we don't have consoles for. But as part of that initialization process, it will initialize the child component, right? The child component itself contains the directive. But before it actually gets to the point of rendering the directive, it's probably going to go through the process of initialization, checking to see if anything had changed. In fact, it's ng on changes first, then initialization. Then we'll fire that do check call to see if there was anything that needs to check that isn't bound to it. Then you've got your after content in it. So if it has any content inside of it, you know, the ng content, if you... If you don't understand what I'm talking about with these lifecycle hook things, I think it, I start talking about it as of video 17, I believe, session 17. So if you want to go back and review that and come back to this, maybe you should. But, so it'll be after content in it on the component and then after content checked. And then what happens next is the, the child component will try to render its view. Okay, and once it tries to render its view, it will notice that it has a directive on it, and the directive will go, okay, you've, you've spotted me, now I'm going to initialize myself. And it will come through, and it will initialize itself by calling, uh, well, first it will do ng on changes to see if anything has changed. Then it will um, initialize itself, right, so it will call on init, and then it will call do check. And then basically, that's it, right? Then what will happen is the child component will then fire off the after view edit method, then the after view checked, and then when we hide the div, you'll see they get destroyed. Okay, so let's take it'll be something like that. I can't. I think that's pretty much how it works. So I'm gonna open up the console here. We've got some stuff in there at the moment. I'm gonna clear that out. And I'll make the console a little bit bigger. So let's have, let's have a think about how the flow is going to work. So keep in mind, I'm tracking the, the events for the child component associated with this div, as well as the directive that's associated with the div that's in the child component. So what happened? We've got a child component, ng on changes fired first. Then it initialized itself, as I said it would. Then it fires off a do check. Then it does an after content in it. Then an after content checked. Okay, so these are the six events that would always fire before it looks at its the content of the view. Then it looks at the view and goes, okay, is there anything in here I need to resolve? Yes, I do. I have a directive. The directive then goes and fires ng on changes. Then it fires its initialization function and then it's do check. All right. 
Then finally, we've rendered the directive. It comes back out to after view in it on the child component. It then goes to after view checked. And then finally, because of the fact that there's been some behavioral changes um, as a result of adding a lifecycle directive on the rendering aspect, it will do another do check right, on the child component, uh, which will do an after content checked. And then finally, the lifecycle hook will do its own do check again. To, and then finally, the after view check will be fired. Okay. So that's on first load. Now if I come up here and I click inside this box, in fact I'll clear this, what do you think is going to happen? In fact, nothing will happen until I either click away or I type something. Now this, is a, this individual field affects both the child component because it's bound through the attributes of the child component but it also affects the directive because it has an input that's linked to this property that's associated with this text box. So ideally what should happen is you should get a ng on changes for the child component. Then you will probably get a do check for the child component. Then you'll get an ng on changes for the directive, a do check for the directive. Then you'll get a content checked Actually, the content checked will happen before the directive, sorry. So you get an ng content checked on the child component, then you get an ng view check, uh, sorry, a view um, on it, view checked hook on the uh, child component. I know it, it's very confusing, there's a lot going on, and that's why I said you probably need to either go back and look at lifecycle hooks more thoroughly. It is a big topic and it's very hard to understand unless you watch it a few times. And the best thing to do is to run this program yourself and see how it flows, okay? I'm just trying to explain it the best way that I can. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna tab away here and we'll see if I'm right about the events. And there we go, we've got a do check. Strangely enough, we didn't get ng on changes. And the reason why we get ng on changes is because the input was never changed. But when we tabbed away, we were changing the state of the form in some way by clicking away. So it did do the other checked events. Now if I come in here and I type the letter A, we do now get the ng on changes for both the child component. And then after content checked, we get the ng on changes for lifecycle hooks directive. And then we get also the associated do checks on each of these. And then the after content checked, after the do checked of child component. And then finally, when the lifecycle uh, hook directive has done its checks, you'll get the after view checked on the child component. All right, and that happens if I add or if I delete or if I remove. I add lots of things. Now, if I come in and put a proper value, you'll see it'll go zero, zero. And then if I go F, you'll see that's a valid color now, and the ng on change would have kicked in and changed that uh, div background color to blue. Okay. So the last thing I want to cover here is we've done all the checks and everything. What happens if we hide this, right? What event are we going to get? Well, clearly we're going to get a destroy. But is something going to happen before that? Yes, there is. We're going to get a do check call. On the child component, we're going to get a do check call on the directive, and then we get a content and view check as well as part of the child component before the directive gets destroyed first, and then the child component will get destroyed. Okay, that's the important distinction here. Just like you know, child components to parent components, how the child component gets destroyed first. Same with the directive. The directive will get destroyed first before a child component will be. And then when we click back on it, we should see initialization process very similar to when we load the screen, except that it will only be related to the child and to um, the directive. And you can see very much similar to what it was when I loaded the page.
Makes sense. Look, it's not an easy subject, this one. It's probably one of the hardest things to explain. And it's definitely one of the hardest things to understand in Angular 2. But I would say it's pretty critical that you need to know this because there's going to be times where you're going to want to implement certain code in certain places. You know, and knowing your life cycle hooks is pretty important. I, for one, still don't fully understand every single scenario. You can see I made a few mistakes, but I have a rough understanding, a pretty good understanding of how this works. So if you get a little bit lost, it's okay. All right, it happens to the best of us, and I'm still trying to get a full grasp on it. But anyway, I just wanted to demonstrate that very quickly because, well, number one, I had to show that life so uh, the ooh, 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 that directives only had four life cycle hooks and didn't take into consideration any content because it didn't have content or any view information because it doesn't have view information. But outside of that, I just wanted to show you the flow um, as best as I could. Uh, and you, for, the best way for you to learn is to do this yourself, okay? Is to play around, create a little app and add the, all the hooks into directives and components and see how they all relate to each other. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna finish that up there and in the next video, I'm going to focus on pipes. Now, pipes is probably the last main feature uh, for Angular 2 before we move into something pretty cool, such as animation. Now, a lot of you have probably been sitting there for a while and going, oh, geez, it'd be nice to know how to animate something. Well, it's coming, okay? And it's, it's pretty cool how Angular does animations. But um, we'll get to that probably in the next couple of lessons or so. And then after that, Obviously, as I said, routing. And then I'm going to end the series. Yeah, a bit sad, but, you know, it's time to move on to something else. You know, I, I, time to teach something else. I've got a few ideas from you guys. A lot of people are saying uh, Redux, which I've never used before, so that'll be interesting to learn. And someone also said, uh, was it React for Facebook? Facebook React. I don't know about Facebook React. I looked at the statistics on it and I just don't know if it's going to be something that lasts a very long time. So I'm probably not going to focus too much on that. What I thought I'd do is I'll, I'll have, may potentially look at Redux, but I'm getting a lot of ideas of building like proper applications for Angular 2. You know, a lot of people are still saying, oh, this is all great, but how do I build a fully fledged application? And I'm like, well, you know, part of this course is to teach you the foundations to be able to do that. But there's a few things that I think that I could probably show that would be worthwhile, such as, you know, logging in with Facebook, authenticating to your API by using Facebook to authenticate or Twitter or all those kinds of things. I think they're always handy to have, you know, as, as um, prototypes for other people to consume. You know... I want to do stuff like that, and then I might. I want to focus more on uh, Node. I think Node would be a key one. That a lot of people have been asking for Node, and a lot of people have been asking for MongoDB. And what was some of the other ones? Uh, yeah, a lot of people just bigger applications. You know, not just little demos. You know, they want bigger applications, but you know, I'm going to do the best I can with what I got. So keep in mind, I work full time just like the rest of you. So. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go. I'm hungry. It's 8.20 p.m. and I want to get this recorded and edited and out the door so you guys can see it. So thank you everyone for listening and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.